see. Oof. Let me see here. Well, we got an extension cord. Oh, let me see. Mm. Well, you ever have a place where you go to work and you know, things just don't, aren't quite working out, you know? And then I got my bit here, and you know, I've been looking for a bit in this thing, and I just can't find it. Of course, it's all a mess. Well, you know what? Maybe I should first start by looking at the plans here. You know, I'll start off and make sure I get the things right. I mean, you hate to put it all together wrong, right? Well, you know... My dad, yeah, his name is Jacob, and he, uh, he taught me everything I need to learn about being a carpenter. And, uh, you know, I'm an honest man. I work hard. I, I would say I'm a kind man, and I'm patient. But you probably can't imagine what I felt. I'm sorry, I, I should tell you who I am. My name is Joe, short for Joseph. You see, I remember reading about a virgin that would be with child. You know, back in Isaiah, you know, therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, a virgin will be with child and will bear a son, and you will call his name Emmanuel. But nothing, nothing could have prepared me for what happened that day. Mary, my sweet, kind, respectable Mary, she told me something. What does she think I am? A fool? Did she want to make me the laughing stock of Nazareth? Everybody would have been going around town and they all would have been saying, oh, that poor Joseph, he got fooled by love. Oh, love just blinds you, doesn't it? This sweet girl told him that she was pregnant by some miracle. I decided that day I was not going to be that guy. But I loved her so much. And as much as this hurt me to my very soul, I didn't want to hurt her. So I chose to not call her out on Facebook. And I chose to just quietly break it off with her and not make a big deal about it. And then something remarkable happened. I had this crazy dream. It was weird. It was, it was this, this dream, and all of a sudden an angel appeared to me in a dream. And the, and the angel said to me, Joseph, didn't call me by my short name, called me Joseph. You know when your mom calls you by your full name, you kind of pay attention? Well, <laughs> he called me Joseph, son of David. Now I know you, I told you that my dad's name is Jacob, but my dad is a descendant of David, and so am I. And so he said to me, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to embrace Mary as your wife, for the one conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. He went on to say, she will give birth to a son, and you, talking to me, you will call his name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. Wow. 
Can you imagine when I woke up? What was I going to do? I was ready to break it off with her. I was ready to be done. I was ready to walk away. And, and what were the people in the community going to say about me? Because they didn't know about this dream. They didn't know that I had been visited by an angel in my dream in the middle of the night that told me to take her to be my wife. They didn't know this. But you know what? Mary, my sweet Mary, she was honest and she wasn't crazy. Man, I was relieved. I was relieved. So I did as the angel told me. And I took Mary to be my wife. But we didn't consummate the marriage until after the baby was born. You know, those nine months as I moved forward to marry her and she became my wife and the rumors were going around as they do in small towns. People were whispering. They had their ideas. They were talking. And yeah, I even heard poor Joseph. He's been fooled by love just like I expected. But then, on top of all of that, and the fact that people were telling me that I should get rid of her, you know, according to the law, I could have put her to death. That's what they would keep telling me. On top of all that, we had this unpleasant journey. This unpleasant journey. We had to go from Nazareth to Bethlehem and all of that just because some government agency decided that they wanted to be able to tax us better. And so to do that, we had to go back to the place where we were from. And both Mary and I were both from Bethlehem, from the family of David. And so we had to go to Bethlehem. Now I know you ladies here who've had your children, you know that to go on a long journey and to go even from here to Toronto in a car on the bumpy roads can be difficult, especially in the later stages of your pregnancy. But can you imagine having to walk and take days to get there? And you're exhausted and you're tired and finally you get there. We get to Bethlehem. And we look for a place where we can stay. And I know you guys are familiar with Holiday Inn and, and Best Westerns and, and all of that. But that didn't exist in Bethlehem. It was a very small little town. And all we could do is hope to find maybe a home that had an extra room where we could go and stay. Because we knew her time was coming. And she was going to give birth to this baby. And when we get there, <sighs> the place is just full. There are people everywhere. They've come from all over the country back to Bethlehem. And the place is hustling and bustling. Just like you guys talk about Christmas, right? Well, we couldn't find a place. We knocked on a door, and there was no place. And a second door, and a third, and a fourth. And we kept going. And Mary was just so exhausted. Hey, and I was tired too. Finally, somebody said, you know what? It's not much. It's kind of like a little shed in the back. You know, kind of like a maybe a beat up old garage or something along that line and, and, and you're, you're welcome to go in there at least you'll be out of the wind 
but at least it'll be a little bit warmer. Hopefully it'll be a little bit more comfortable for you. And so what are we going to do? What else could we do but say, okay, thank you? And we were so thankful that we finally had a place. And being that I'm a handyman, I was able to at least clean the place up quickly. And we were able to place, get a place where we could, once the baby was born, have at least a place where we could place the baby, where the baby could sleep. And I know you guys sing a song about the baby not crying. But you weren't there that night. And I'm thankful the baby cried. Because that way at least I knew he was healthy. He had good lungs. A strong voice. You know that night, it was so remarkable. She gave birth to this baby in a, in a place y- y- you really wouldn't want to have your dog necessarily giving birth to puppies. But she did. And then we entertained guests. Guests came to find us. And they told us a story about how they were visited by angels. And they they came to look for this baby, this special baby. Well, these guests were... You know, they were shepherds. They're not the most reliable people. I think carpenters are far more reliable than they are. And people know that. They know they can trust us. Shepherds like to tell tall tales about how they rescued a lamb from a bear. Or how they took on a lion. They love to tell these stories. And of course, they sit around their campfire and they tell the stories over and over and they just embellish them more and more. And they get more and more fascinating. And yet it was them that came to us to tell us about the fact that they were visited by angels. Well, after Jesus was born, according to the law, we had to take him to Jerusalem and we had to have him circumcised on the eighth day. And so we did. We went to Jerusalem, and when we got to Jerusalem, it was quite remarkable even there. There was this prophet and this prophetess, and, and, and they were just so thrilled to see this baby. Now, I know, when you see a baby, who doesn't get excited about seeing a baby? Babies are cute. There's one right there, cute little baby. Babies are cute but they were waiting for this baby to be born. The prophet said now he could go to be with God in heaven because he saw the Messiah, the one whom God had promised. Many people do not realize this, but you know, after we were finished in the temple, we went home. We went home back to Nazareth because that's where we lived. That's where I had my business. That's where we were set up. And then Mary, she wanted to get back to Bethlehem, be closer to our roots, closer to our family, closer to her parents. And so we decide, okay, let's take our family, Mary and Jesus and myself, and let's go down to Bethlehem. And so we moved to Bethlehem, and I then set up my business as a carpenter. And I started to work, and I started to get more business because I was in my hometown, and people knew my name. They knew my father, Jacob. They knew the work that he did, and so they also recognized that I would do good work as well. And as we were struggling to get the business going, and I was hoping, you know, I'd be able to get the business going so that I'd be able to provide for the family and take care of my son and my wife and the other children that we were going to have. 
we got this strange visit. You know, we're living in our little house. I'm working hard, trying to make ends meet. And we get these people showing up from a far away country. These were foreigners. They didn't even speak our language. I mean, they, we could understand a little bit what they were saying. They could speak. But man, they were people from far away. And they came bringing expensive gifts. Now, <laughs> these gifts, I thought, perfect. This is our ticket. This is it. I can thank God for these people coming and bringing these gifts to take care of this child. I thought, we're going to be set for life. Now I could hire an apprentice, and I could really get our business going, and I'd be able to provide for my family, and we could set ourselves up here, and we could live here comfortably for years to come. At this time, Jesus, he was about two years old. <laughs> you know, I hate dreams. I really do. Because that night, I had a second dream, a second dream. Again, an angel came to me in the dream. It's like, what's with angels coming to me in my dreams? And the angel told me, take Jesus and Mary and run, run to Egypt. Get out of Bethlehem. We were just settling in. I was just getting my business going. I was just getting established. I was going to be set to take care of my family for years to come. So what did I do? In the middle of the night, I abandoned my business, and I left that night, and we lived in Egypt as foreigners for several years until I had another dream, and again, an angel appeared to me, and this time the angel says, you know what? Okay, you're good. You can go back. You can go back. It's safe now for the child the one who was going to harm the child is now dead. And so, of course, I thought, I go back to Bethlehem. Right? That would make sense, right? But, you know, we heard rumors. And we decided Bethlehem might not be the best place for us. And so we went back to Nazareth. And you know what I didn't know? I didn't know that God had already determined and already said in his word in the Old Testament that this child of mine would be known as a Nazarene. That it was already foretold by God many years before. Now I know, I know some of you are wondering, the last time you hear about me is when we went to Jerusalem and Jesus was 12 years old. Just so we're clear, it was not his bar mitzvah because that is at 13, not 12. We were just going to, Beth to Jerusalem as a family, which we did annually. But this time, something remarkable happened, and that was we lost him. We lost Jesus. We didn't know where he was, and we looked for him, and we were frantic, and his mother was upset with me because it should have been my responsibility to make sure that he was safe because I'm the dad but we found him but I know what some of you are thinking what happened to me after that what happened to me after that account because after that there is no more story of me well I'd love to tell you that story but that'll have to be for another day. May the Lord bless you. Call up the worship team.